and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Matthew 6.12, the most important verse in the Bible today, part 8. And forgive us our debts. Uh, some versions may read, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Or, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In content and context, in Matthew chapter 6, this is part of what we typically come to call the, the Lord's Prayer. To me, that's a misnomer. It shouldn't be called the Lord's Prayer. It should be called something like the, pa the pattern of prayer, or Jesus teaches us how to pray, or, you know, something to that effect. Because, you know, Jesus never sinned, so why does he need forgiveness? He's teaching us. There's the key word, teaching he was the teacher. He, you cannot, it'll take you five and a half years to describe the nature and the ministry of the Messiah, of the Lord and Savior, of Jesus Christ. The man who here in Matthew chapter 6 is teaching us how to pray. And this is deep. This is the most important verse in the Bible today, okay? Matthew 6, 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You see, the, the, that goes against you know, the, the, the ways of this world. It, it certainly goes against the, the way of Wall Street. You know, the, they're not going to forgive you your debts. No, they got a ledger. They're keeping score. And we, in our humanity, isn't that exactly what we do? We don't forgive. We never forget. We keep a ledger. We're keeping score. I'm going to get you back. Paybacks are a... Uh, that's just our human nature. That That's that's, that's what we're taught from get-go. That's the world system, and that's what we're growing up in, and that's what we know. And it, it, it comes naturally because as we were together before, we are looking at the, the nature, the condition of our heart. And, and what we see in Jeremiah 17, 9, I believe it was, that the heart is what? Is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked it goes against our nature to forgive anybody we might let we might let something slide oh I forgive you you know and two weeks later we hit them with what we just said we forgave them with you know we find out we didn't really forgive them we just gave them a, a reprieve a little time you know brace for it <laughs> I didn't forgive you it's coming forgiveness at the end of the day the bottom line here that's what this is all boiling down to forgiveness you know in the description box below I'm going to give you a couple links um, and I, you know if you never looked at the links before I think you might want to do this time because it's just music videos but it speaks to the heart of the matter here it speaks to you know the essence of what this is all about. And I'm going to do so, you know, I'll give you a secular song and I'll give you a Christian song. But at the end of the day, I want you to listen to the message. And I hope maybe you can hear me talking in, in spite of all my words. I hope you can hear the message here. Because it's the most important message, the most important verse in the Bible today. It's about forgiveness. You know, you look up the word forgive in uh, the dictionary and it says to forgive. A. To grant pardon for or to. B. To cancel a debt or a payment. C. To cease to feel resentment. Did you catch that? Forgiveness, it means to cease to feel resentment. Or D. Forgive can mean just to grant pardon. A release from you never you no longer owe me you know what I mean forgiveness I love this part it says to cease to feel resentment I think that's the heart of the matter here in in this uh, passage of scripture that we're looking at typically known as the Lord's Prayer but I think you already know how I feel about that it's Matthew 6 verses 9 to 13 
but the most important verse we find in the content and context of that. So you're going to want to read that. You're going to want to maybe even memorize it. But at the end of the day, I really need for you to understand what this verse is saying, Matthew 6, 12, and forgive us our debts. Number one, we are guilty. I am guilty. You are guilty. And judgment is coming. Okay? We're, we're guilty. There's no way around that. The anger, the righteous anger of God is burning bright. And that's what the whole revelation thing is about. Okay? But that that's supposed for another day. We can escape all that. Understand what the, the Lord is telling us here. Even in, in, in the guise of a prayer, here's a very important, important truth that we have to get a hold of. It comes down to forgiveness to cease to feel resentment, to stop keeping score. Because realize, number one, I'm guilty. You're guilty. It says, I believe, it's not even in my notes, but I think it's uh, Romans 2, verse 1. It says, and, and why do you judge, O oh man, for what you judge you are guilty of? Human nature. We always seem, we are gifted in the art of transference. When I'm guilty of sin, I don't look at me, I look at others. When I'm guilty of stealing, it hurts me even more when someone steals against, you know, steals from me. It, this is metaphysical, okay? This is supernatural, this is spiritual, to forgive and to forget. To cease to feel resentment. To forgive us our debts, it says, as we're praying, as we forgive those, you know, as we forgive our debtors. Forgiveness, I wrote down here in my little notes, see, not much, but it's what I want to talk to you about today. Forgiveness, forgiveness separates, sets us apart. Because you understand that forgiveness is not merely just an act, okay? It's a state of being. It's a state of heart. It's the condition of your heart. Resentment, to cease to feel that resentment, you, it's, it's a state, it's an emotional state. It's a spiritual state. It's, it's a cognitive state to forgive, to forget, to wipe the slate clean, to, you know, to blot out the, 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 the ledger, understand what I'm saying here. Forgiveness by our own power and of ourselves. Number one, forgiveness is impossible. We can't do it. It's not in our nature. Again, our heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. We don't, we don't forgive, we just we keep score. And the Bible is telling us to quit keeping score. Because if we do, so is God. If we don't forgive, we won't be forgiven. We know that from Luke 17, verses 1 through 4. Let me read that to you. Jesus is speaking, and he says, Then he said to his disciples, It is impossible that offenses, excuse me, offenses should come, but woe to him through whom offenses should come. Right there, that, that's a sermon in itself. But understand, okay, listen to what I'm saying. Jesus said, It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom offenses should come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves. If a brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day he returns to you saying, I I'm sorry? Jesus says what? Kick him? You know, bite his... No. He says, you shall forgive him. Wow. That, that goes against human nature. Someone's going to do me wrong seven times in a row on the same day, I might forgive the first three, four, maybe five times, but definitely not six and seven. Do you understand? Do you understand? 
This is the seriousness of it. Forgiveness is outside of ourselves unless we know, unless we experience and have a heart knowledge that we ourselves are forgiven. Then Jesus says, forgive. Freely you have been given. Now freely you receive, now freely, freely give. It's in the Bible, I don't know where. Maybe we'll find it, make that the most important verse Bible verse in the Bible next video. But understand what I'm trying to say today. Forgiveness. It's all about forgiveness and it has nothing or very little to do with us. It's a state of heart. It's a nature of being. And if I'm still a human being, it's going to be very hard for me to really truly forgive. But if I'm going to be a spirit being, it'll be easier. It'll come naturally. Forgiveness. This is very hard. Okay, I know a lot of Christian people who, who can't or won't forgive. If you read the Bible, that means it means what? It means they're not a Christian. It means they haven't had that regenerative supernatural power. They, they, they might know, but Jesus says even the demons believe and tremble. We have to receive. We have to receive the forgiveness by Jesus' blood that day on the cross. we got to believe it and receive it. And that's the only way that we can give it back. It's the only way that I can forgive. I, I tell you this from personal experience because for the first 38 years of my life, every day, I, I would go over and I would, I, would, I would invent unique and painful ways of killing somebody. All right? I mean it. I had... Okay, I have issues. All right? I had issues. I was done wrong, y'all. Like you wouldn't believe. I didn't even believe it myself. Matter of fact, I threw it in the back of my mind, but there was always that seething hatred, that distrust, that anger, that propensity towards murder. Suicidal and homicidal tendencies were my nature. That was my game. Because I couldn't take it out on this particular person being removed by God only knows how many miles, of course, what do I do? Take it out of myself. I start doing drugs. And then before you know it, you know, I, I, had, I had six overdoses. The anger that I had in my heart, the unforgiveness, not wanting to forgive that person was killing me. Matter of fact, it killed me six times over. Only by the grace of God am I sitting here today. Only by the grace of God. I don't have a nickel in this quarter. Thank you, Jesus. I've been forgiven. I've been set free. And now, freely I receive, freely I must give. So, this person is very lucky that I'm a Christian now because I did run into them again. And it was very hard. Because I still know. I still feel. I still had that score against him. But I had to let it go. I forgave him. In, in, in nature, in thought, in practice, I forgave until I actually had to do it in person. It wrecked me. It wrecked me. Yeah. Forgiveness. It's hard. It's hard sometimes. No, every time it's impossible by our own, by our own nature, by our own initiative, of, of our own doing. We might be able to, you know, put things on the back burner. Oh, I forgive you. Sure. Okay. And then what? I mean, how many husband and wives here, boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, brother, sister, how many people know that, you know, we had this argument three years ago, you said you forgive me, so now we have an argument now, and you throw that up against me now? Three years later, I thought I was forgiven. No, it was just put on the back burner. Never forgot. Seething, the Bible says, I mean, not the Bible, the, the uh, dictionary says, uh, where is it? To cease to feel resentment. To forgive is to quit resenting and start repenting. We've been forgiven in Christ. All our sins, everything has been forgiven. So now the hard part, this is where the rubber hits the road for, for Christianity. 
the hard part is forgiving others. And, and you know what? That's why I'm so thankful that it, it, it's, it's more about Him than us. We can't do that until He does it through us. But if we don't, if we don't, you know, here in this in this passage, Matthew six twelve, the most important verse in the Bible today, in content, in content and context, we find it in verses nine through thirteen, known as the Lord's Prayer. But if you go on to verses fourteen and fifteen, now listen to me. This is this is important, okay? Forgiveness. Matthew six verses fourteen and fifteen says, "For if you forgive men their trespasses." Your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. He's talking to the disciples now. Believers. Dare I say receivers. This is before this is before the actual event on the cross. So did they have the Holy Spirit yet? I don't think so. I don't think they had the inert inert supernatural power, but they had a head knowledge more than a heart knowledge. And at this point, Jesus is saying, of, he's giving a very crucial, important message. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, but if, there's that word, that big, humongous, two-letter word, if, but if you do not forgive men their trespasses, hear me now, this is, this is in the Bible, Jesus' own words, neither will your Father forgive you of your trespasses. Ouch. Christians, hear me, okay? Ouch. <laughs> the rubber hits the road in this forgiveness. You know, and we, we can't be cute, we can't be coy or smart or religious like Peter did. Remember back, uh, where was it? I wrote it down. Matthew, here's your homework. Read Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35, because here Peter got all big and bad on Jesus. You know, he tried to show Jesus how 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 religious he was, how how scholarly he was, how much he knew, and he was he's he's just uh, repeating Old Testament precepts. We'll get to it. He's saying, "The Lord." How many times must I forgive my brother? Seven times? Read that passage. Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35. Peter is being cute. He's being religious. He doesn't want to forgive somebody, so he tries to set conditions. Okay, Lord, what if I forgive him seven times? And then on the eighth time, can I really you know, unload? He was looking for a way out of forgiving other people. But Jesus' response, you've got to read this for yourself. Matthew 18, okay? Jesus knew the heart of Peter. He knew where he was coming from. He knew where he was going. And P Peter was just waiting for Jesus to say, no, on the eighth time, you know, unload. You tried, you've done your best, now go get him. Jesus re re rebuked him. He restored him. He re replied by saying, no, I tell you, not only seven times, but seven times 70. Now, for you math math mathematicians, you're going to do the, you're going to do the math, come up with 490 times. So, if my brother comes up on me 491 times oh boy that's on that's not the point hopefully after you know 312 we would lose count and forgiveness would become it would come naturally it would be our it would be a part of our psyche that we would lose that resentment after the 309th time but that goes against human nature doesn't it doesn't it that's what I'm telling you. Being Christian is supernatural. You got to let go, <laughs> as the old saying goes, let go and let God, right? Because forgiveness is hard. Forgiveness is, dare I say, impossible. Well, we know Jesus said it's impossible that offenses should not come. We're always going to be offended. There's always going to be hardship. Somebody's always going to be doing us wrong. People are always going to be poking us in the eye, stabbing us in the back saying things, doing things, it's always going to be there because it's human nature. We're in the world now, but but we're not of it. Now this whole being, knowing that you've been forgiven, we have to forgive. Knowing that Jesus himself said it, if you do not forgive, you won't be forgiven. This is important. 
This is important. That's why it's the most important verse in the Bible today. The rubber hits the road in forgiveness. Now again, if you if you skip down to the you know whatever section below there, I'm going to give you a couple links. It may be beneficial to listen to these things because music soothes the savage beast. Trust me, I know. Having said all that, looking at Peter trying to be all smart with his seven times condition, he was citing the religious proprieties drawn from Leviticus chapter 26, verses 18 through 28. Yeah, I did my homework. Look it up. It's a very important, if not scary, part of Scripture because the first part of the chapter is talking about nothing but blessings. If you obey, blessings. If you're good, you know, bubble gums and lollipops, you know, cotton candy falling from the sky. If you're good, everything's going to be going your way. But if you don't, if you disobey, if, if, if you refuse what Jesus is telling us, what, what, what the Bible tells us, if you refuse, then guess what? You're going to be cursed. Bad things are going to happen. And this is where that seven times, you got to read this passage, okay? Leviticus Chapter 26, verses 18 through 28. Here's where that whole seven times kicks in. Because our punishment for disobeying is multiplied. Look forward to what the revelation, what the tribulation is going to be. That's going to be the wrath of God. And how many times do we see the number seven in Revelation? How many times do we see the number seven in Scripture to begin with? It's important, okay? It's important, but that's supposed for another day. It's important that we forgive, that we learn how to forgive, that, that we are given the ability to forgive. If God removes from us the heart of stone and gives us a heart of cotton candy, whatever, look, look, look. We have to be reborn. We have to be made new. We have to be regenerated by. We got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, and that can only be done by reading the Bible. Now, I know a lot of Christians that don't want to read the Bible, and that's why I'm doing these most important verse uh, videos, <laughs> with the hope that hopefully maybe someday you'll you'll want to read the Bible yourself, because that's that's where we that's where we experience growth. That, that's not where we only not only learn head knowledge, but heart knowledge, wisdom. Oh, wisdom. Wisdom. There's, oh, don't get me going there. Knowledge and wisdom. Hmm, big difference. I wish I had the gift of gab. I wish I was a teacher or a preacher, and I can tell you, I can, I can relate to you, that I can make you understand or at least feel the way I'm feeling, or see, now, now I'm chipping over my tongue, only because it's so very, very important. It, it's, it's paramount, it, it, indescribable. The rubber hits the road in forgiveness. Either you do or you don't. There's no middle ground there. You can't ride the fence. And then sometimes you got to do it every single day. Wake up every day. For the first couple, you know, this forgiveness thing didn't come easy for me. Once I knew for a fact that I had to, I had to do it over and over and over and over every day for probably three months. I had to pray for this idiot. <laughs> that's a bad, that's a bad word. I don't have to like the person. I have to love them. I don't have to forget, but I have to forgive. Because if I forget, it just sets me up for continued punishment, continued abuse. And homie, don't play that, okay? Christianity does not mean to lay down and, and, and be a welcome mat that people can step on and tromp on and all that. I know there's there's people that say, oh, you know, pacifist Christian and, and so on and so forth. But you know what? Read the Bible, okay? That's all I'll say about that. But, in, in, you know, in Levit Leviticus, Leviticus. <laughs> Say that three times fast. I can't even say it once. Leviticus 26, verse 18. And it says, and this is in that whole content and context of seven times and punishment or cursings or whatnot. It says, and after all this, now listen to me here. 
the first part of the, the, the chapter was talking about blessings. Look at America. We have been so blessed. Leviticus 26, 18. And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. I, I did this thing once through the book of Judges. And in there, I highlighted and I preached and I I pounded the pulpit and I, I, I know for a fact that there's a lot of similarities between Old Testament Israel and the New Testament church. And, and there's a lot of similarities between the New Testament church and the nation of America. But just because there's similarities does not mean they're the same. It does not mean that we enjoy the same benefits and privileges and so on and so forth. However, God is God. And, and he, he's, he's constant. He does not change. Excuse me. His ways are, you know, let's just say they're etched in stone. Because remember the Ten Commandments? God will not change. He cannot change. He does not change. So what was good for the goose is good for the gander. Now listen, America, because it's already too late. It's already too late. So listen and do something about it for yourself and for your family because judgments coming to America it's irreversible it cannot be stopped you already see it happening now and after all this if you do not obey me then I will punish you seven times more for your sins we're talking about end times events here we're living in the end times we're seeing everything begin to happen everything uh, everything is just snowballing and we see the bigger picture now that was always painted for us in scripture in prophecy, the book of Revelation, and Daniel, Ezekiel, and so on and so forth. It's there in front of our eyes, and we cannot see the forest or the trees. I'm telling you, you've been, if you're a Christian, you've been forgiven. If you want to be a Christian, if you want to be forgiven, you're going to have to forgive others. Otherwise, otherwise, we face divine retribution. We're offered divine deliverance, but otherwise, there's the promise of divine retribution. The book of Revelation, not a pretty thing. We are at the precipice. We are going through the doors. It could happen any minute now. That door could be swung wide open, and things will start happening quickly. Like, bam, 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 succession, bam, 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 keep going on, bam, bam, bam. It just gets worse and worse and worse for seven years, and not a person on earth will survive unless the Lord. Unless the Lord. That's the end. Unless God. Because humankind, mankind, we've been given so much, and we've done so little. We, we we had so much potential and we've fallen way short. We're given so much love and yet all we do is hate. Mankind in and of himself is irredeemably lost. But the best part about that says in the scriptures, even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. get a hold of this the most important verse in the Bible today is Matthew 6 <laughs> verse 12 it's about forgiveness and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us I could break loose on this whole revelation thing right now I could break loose on this whole salvation and damnation right now I think you already know what I'm saying I think you already feel it. You already know. So I'm just going to end this here and now. But again, down in the description box below, I'm going to give you a couple something, something. All right? Songs. No preaching. No pounding the pulpit. But listen to the songs. I know you'll recognize one, if not both of them. But listen to the words. Understand the heart of the matter, of what is really being said here. Grab a hold of it. Get on board before it's too late. It's already too late.
This is your last, last chance. And that's why I say this is the most important verse in the Bible today. Matthew 6, 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And with that, I'll say God bless.